right, Patrick. I need some history from you. What happened today? Okay. Why did you come to the hospital? What was it that caused you to feel like you needed to get evaluated? Mm, just a, a really bad chest pain. This all of a sudden happened. I couldn't. Uh, I had to hunch over to walk. Lessened when I sat down. Couldn't lay down on my back to that side. Is that right? What were you doing when it started? Driving my truck. So just driving your truck, and all of a sudden you started had the sudden onset of chest pain. Yeah. Do you smoke? No. Nope. Good. Good. So you don't smoke. Uh, you're fairly tall. You're a fairly tall guy, and and you're and you're fairly thin. So those are people who tend to have these okay. pneumothoraces. And uh, do you feel real short of breath? Not right now. On your chest X-ray, you do have a very large uh, collapsed lung, so a large pneumothorax. Your your collapsed lung is very small because it's collapsed. What what do you do for a living now? What do you are you are you students? I got a gas Okay. All right. So Adrian, what are you giving as far as pain medications? So just pre-medicating for anxiolysis with a milligram of Ativan IV and also with 25 of fentanyl IV. We're going to hold off, we're going to hold an additional 25 of fentanyl for further analgesia as if needed for the procedure. Okay. Patrick, do you have, you have no medical problems of any kind? No, sir. Okay. Just to kind of walk through the procedure, it's going to be just like it's going to be second intercostal space, mid clavicular line, where we'll be introducing our needle and our incision will be made ultimately. So I'm just feeling for my landmarks at this point. So you're using the True Close system? We're using the Uracil, which is a, off the True or True Close system. It's a um, a chest tube that actually fits onto the chest as an apparatus and um, doesn't require the atrium, can be just hooked up to low intermittent suction directly to our wall suction. So he can get up and actually walk around after he's had this place. That's correct. And for stable pneumo uh, for a stable pneumothorax, this is the ideal, um, meaning a patient who has no respiratory distress or profoundly hypoxic crashing. This is a the procedure of choice. So, so why is it, in your opinion, the procedure of choice? It's just for comfort, and this will essentially, looking at him right now, he's in no profound respiratory distress. The, the uracil will not reinflate his lung immediately. It will take, it will occur over time, and um, that's okay because it's not as if we need him to. Um, this can improve over a shorter period of time, and that's adequate. Right. <clears throat> right. We'll leave you flat, okay, bud? Okay. So is the drugs all well starting to feel something? Yeah, so you should feel kind of... <laughs> Happy? High, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid he's going to get some pain. So what would have happened if he hadn't come in? That's a very good question, Mom. Do you mind being on YouTube? No, I don't mind. Okay, so um, this is Mrs. Lillis. Um, yeah, he would have uh, he would have been at, at risk of potentially uh, getting a tension pneumothorax, where as the air builds up inside the chest cavity, it actually can cause a pressure on the vascular system, and people can get um, uh, hypotension, a drop in blood pressure. They can go into basically shock, and they can die from it. So, a tension pneumothorax is an extremely worrisome, concerning emergency and um, he's got a huge pneumothorax and he would have been at risk of a uh, tension pneumothorax in, in my opinion based on what I see there because that lung is actually uh, quite collapsed there. But that's the concern okay. about these pneumothoraxes. All right, good question. So Adrian, what I'd like you to do is just uh, each step of the way sure. uh, give us pointers and explain what you're doing. Okay. So first things first, we just prep the area. Well, first we've shaved the area just to, uh, to allow adhesive a little bit of um, a better seal. Um, then we prep the area with core prep three times. We're allowing the core prep to dry at this point because we are introducing a, um, this is a, a sterile procedure. We are introducing a catheter into a sterile cavity. <clears throat> I'll, I'll put it in the no, I can, I'm, I can hand it off to you. Oh, okay. I thought I just you wanted to make sure, okay, make sure got we you. had something okay, that no problem. Okay, so everything is prepared. So our suction is prepared. Um, the patient is prepped currently. 
We're not going to anesthetize the area. All right, so currently the patient is prepped, and we're just feeling for landmarks at this point. We have the clavicle and first rib, and then we're moving down into the second intercostal space right here. And that's where we'll be introducing our needle and our trachea. You doing okay there, my friend? Yeah. All right, sir. Just relax. The first thing that we're going to do now that we've identified our landmarks is to anesthetize the area with just a wheel. All right, bud. You're doing awesome. And that's just a wheel, okay? And then with a 22 gauge needle, it will go through our wheel. into the thoracic cavity, anesthetizing as we go down. And essentially what we're looking for at this point, when we begin to aspirate, which is not right now, will be air. So I air. see air, some air bubbles coming back up. Those are your air bubbles, and we know we're in the thoracic cavity. Okay. So how many, how? So I'm going to just continue to anesthetize that area. And just make a note of where. So that needle, that needle that you had was one and a half? That's correct. Just going to extend that, make a little incision with our scalpel just to allow for that. That for us to be introduced. And it's a simple matter of pushing directly down. A little bit of force. And then it's connected. Patrick, you're doing all right. Can you pull that paper back just a little bit? Mm -hmm. You need to get it. Right, Squeeze as hard as you want. We remove our trip bar and close the URSL. Doing right, Patrick? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us if you're feeling bad. And that is essentially it. We got low intermittent suction on, Renee? I got an opportunity to That's no, that's fine. There's a are you nauseated or anything like that? Mm -mm. All right. Sometimes there's a, a vagal type response that you get after a needle is put in your chest. So. All right, but you're done. So this is slowly going to improve that that area, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, that's collapsed. And we're going to get a chest X-ray to compare in just a little bit. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, so the next step is to get a confirmatory X-ray and then to repeat another X-ray well, half ninety minutes time. All right. Okay, and then we we'll continue to watch the patient for any complications. Okay. All right, we're just a chill. And you can actually see the fluttering of the little flutter valve here that will indicate that you're essentially in thoracic cavity. Hey, there's what you're still? Yeah. Is it I mean, you are a CEO? Yeah. You are. You're good. He did well. Okay. Did you step out of the room? I did. Okay. <laughs> that was for your own it was from peace my of own. mind. Yes. Yeah. If you're still hurting, we can give you some more medicine. You okay? You sure? Promise you'll tell me if you start hurting? No nausea? You don't feel like you're gonna throw up on Yeah, Patrick, right? you don't have to be you don't have to be tough and all that. I mean just we, we You've understand. Already been tough. Doing this was tough. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be tougher. Okay, so you would just ask how we know when it's back to normal size, and we're just going to go ahead and repeat the x-ray right now, and then uh, we'll follow it with x-rays. Uh, Dr. Mean, how often do you want to do x-rays on him? Um, a, a repeat x-ray should be um, performed in about 30 minutes' time to see that we've got some resolution of the pneumothorax. Okay. Okay, good enough. Now, are we going to put him in our observation unit? Do you guys, family medicine, is going to uh, <laughs> um, concede to that? or? Plan, yeah. So okay. Kind of just watch him and all right. see how he does as far as um, the resolution of his pneumothorax. Okay. All right. I mean, if you guys want to admit him upstairs to your 
I think um, him going off is essentially a bed issue. If we can get a bed upstairs, then he'll come upstairs. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Perfect. So it's back. x-ray time. Does this stay on there? Yes, it does. Yeah. That stays on. Don't take that off. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you don't want me to rip it off? I think you would you would have a couple people unhappy with you. Probably. <laughs> you know you're going to be on YouTube, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> Caught me off guard. <laughs> okay. Patrick, taking a big deep breath for me? Absolutely. And your thumb? Well, well, yeah, I'm worried about my thumb. <laughs> taking another deep breath. And Too old to worry about the rest. Hold it. You can breathe. So, Patrick, on a scale of 10, how bad was the pain when that went in? 10. Okay. And how long did it last as a 10? I don't know. that done. It went away. I'm coming. Went away. Okay. So, just a few. It was less than 30 seconds that you had the severe pain. Okay.